The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support, visit americasupportsyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. We leave no warrior behind. Wounded Warrior Project is a nonprofit organization created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war. Whether those scars are physical or mental, we're here to make sure that they heal. And whether it's helping those with post-traumatic stress disorder live a normal life again or giving much-needed support to injured warriors and veterans' hospitals. Because no one deserves our help more than the men and women who risk their lives to keep us safe. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind. Ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill, a breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. 
just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. To you, one and all, all of you liberty lovers and ecclesiastites all across the globe. Yes, it is I, your lovable host, Elrod, coming to you live from the Bunker Eye studio. Somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where it is a balmy 30-something degrees out there. Well, we had some sleet, and uh, well, it wasn't freezing rain, but it was got a lot of sleet yesterday. Uh, it's a it's a balmy 33, 34 degrees out there this morning. They canceled school yesterday, so the kiddies didn't get a second snow day. Um, anybody ever see that really cute little movie? It wasn't a Disney flick, by the way, but it was called Snow Day. That was made a few years ago. It was really cute. Uh, and, and they their whole mission <laughs> for a whole snow day was to have a second snow day because they never had two do- snow days in a row. So... They basically had to, and it's a, it, it took place in a fictional uh, Syracuse, New York. And trust me, I live in Sy- I lived in Syracuse. That town and that movie looked nothing like Syracuse, New York. And Syracuse has more than one snowplow guy. They had one snowplow guy in the movie, but it was cute. So they spent most of their day, their snow day. <laughs> try- of course, you don't pick this up when you're first watching the movie. Uh, but you, then you realize, wait a minute, they spent most of their, their day, their snow day, trying to stop the snowplow guy from plowing the streets clear so they could go to school the next morning. So they, they basically spent uh, half their day and all night unplowing the streets that snowplow guy plowed so they could have a second snow day when they should have just enjoyed their first snow day in, in the first place. But so no second, second snow day here in... Um, in New Hampshire for the kiddies. Uh, it wasn't even a snow day yesterday. It was kind of a sleet day. It, it couldn't even go out yesterday and enjoy it because it was, you know, that sleety stuff, sleety snow, hard snow, whatever, you know, grainy, granular, frozen rain kind of snow. Uh, it was a pain in the butt to clear off your cars and everything. Yeah, it was, yeah, yuck. But no snow day today. Call in number is 603-835-3226. As we uh, get into hump day, uh, got a lot of stuff. You know, Trump is moving. I don't know why people are. Well, I do know why. I mean, the, the liberal left is trying to say, "Well, Trump broke his promise. He broke his. Pr- he didn't do everything that he promised on day one." Well, it's week one, and he's still moving on. I mean, he's expected to sign even more stuff. Uh, you know, 
you, you got the left who are running around out there t- uh, trying to accuse Donald Trump of being a fascist and a wannabe dictator. Well, let me let me let us remind you of something. President Obama is the one that set the tone and set the precedent for massive amounts of of uh, uh, executive orders. Now, sure, many, many modern day presidents, all the modern day presidents have used executive orders. Uh, some of them more than others, but most of most of those executive orders were not related to trying to skirt Congress. Well, now Trump has to go in there and rescind some of those executive orders that were issued by Obama, which really tried to, um, you know, get around Congress. And in order to do that, he's got to do what? Issue executive orders. I, I, it's, a, it's a terrible thing, I know. I mean, the only way to get rid of an executive order or rescind an executive order is to issue another executive order rescinding the previous executive order. Uh, presidents have done that for ever since they've been using executive orders, too. They go in and they rescind or add to a uh, previous president's executive order. That's how you get rid of them. And that's how you change them. You can only do it by executive order. I mean, Congress can get involved. They can make a law, I suppose, and put the bill on the president's desk. But it's just easier and faster and better to... Uh, and, and that way, Congress doesn't... Um, doesn't really usurp the 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 authority and power of the executive branch, uh, but then again, you know, Obama tried to usurp the power of the uh, of the congressional branch with some of his executive orders. So Trump is is now using his cell phone and his pen. Hey, you know, I I got a pen and a cell phone. Uh, I, I can do if the Congress won't act. I will. So now Trump is saying, well, you acted, and now I'm acting. And so now Trump is, uh, yeah, it's a terrible Trump impersonation. I'll have to work on that. Uh, Trump is using his pen and his cell phone to reverse some of those executive orders. And it's taking, look, it takes time. You, you folks do realize that they, that they actually have to be written and executive orders have to be written in such a manner that passes constitutional muster. Now, you can say, well, the executive order, all it, all it does is, uh, is um, you know, grant dreamers asylum. Well, when you see the actual executive order, it's a few paragraphs long, and the language is very specific. So these things have to be drafted and crafted and, and, and read and then passed to, uh, through White House counsel to make sure it meets constitutional muster. Um, and, then, and then finally it gets, it gets written in its permanent form, its final form, and then issued, given to the president. And by the way, most, pre- most presidents don't actually write the executive order. I mean, they have to, it has to go through this process in order for it to be on the up and up. Legal. It's not just a simple paragraph. Okay, we're going to build a wall. It, that's not the way it works. Uh, so it does. It takes time. These things have to actually be written out, and it has to go through a review process. It just isn't, you know, one day somebody just sits in front of the computer, pounds a, uh, a paragraph or two out in the computer, and then hands it to the president. That's not how it works. But that's the way the press wants you to believe how it works. That's not how it works. It takes time to craft these things because, you know, when the, the, well, Obama pretty much told us that when he said, well, yeah, you know, I'll have my people look at this and, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to write an executive order. We're going to craft it. And sometimes it could take a week or two because it's got to go through that review process and rewriting. It's not it's not just written the day that he says, well, I'm going to sit down at the desk and, write, you know, at the uh, good old uh, in the Oval Office and, and write this out right now. Hey, that, that's the way we're going to do it. And then I'll sign it. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So there is, a, there is a drafting and review process before the final edition is actually approved. And then it gets approved by the president. And then it goes through that signing ceremony, basically. So that, that can take some time. And depending on how sensitive the issue is, in some case, why do you think it took, you know, in some cases more than two weeks to, you know, two weeks to a month 
from the time that Obama would announce that he's going to issue an executive order because he was trying to skirt the Constitution and Congress in order to get it done. And in order for him to do that, it had to be specific language. And you just don't sit down at your at your word processing machine, otherwise known as a computer or a typewriter, depending on whatever you're using, and just bang it out, bang out on the keys an executive order. It takes a while. So even if the President Trump was ready to sit there for eight hours on the first day and sign two hundred executive orders, it couldn't have happened because. These people needed to be in place in order to write them, draft them, review them, and get them approved. So it's going to take a little while. It may take a couple of weeks for him to, 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 to get most of the executive orders that, that he promised to get done, to get them done. You, ever st- you know, it takes time to write stuff. It re- you don't really think about it, but whenever I sit down and write an article... You know, you might think, well, you know, it takes 10 minutes to write. No, it doesn't. Before you know, by the time you, by the time you, you get down all your thoughts and you write it down, uh, you type it out, what have you, and then you go through the review process to make sure your, your punctuation and spelling is correct and all that kind of stuff, it could be 30 minutes to an hour for one article. No joke. So it takes time when, and, and that's when you're just writing, you know, if you, if you got to do any sort of research, well, then that just adds to the time. If you've got to go in and, and add quotes and, and that kind of stuff, um, it just adds to the time that it takes to write it. So before you know it, you could, you know, one article, especially if it's a lengthy one, um, you know, if, if it's, uh, you, know, you know, I know most websites, they put up these little, what we call these quick hit articles. Uh, sure, that can take, you know, about 30 minutes or so to write, 30 minutes to an hour. But if you write a real, rather in-depth, you know, 1,000 word or more long article, it could take you two hour, two or three hours to go from start to finish. Now, imagine when you're doing something as complicated as trying to write an executive order. It can take an entire day. So, you know, it, it just it j- just means that, that you have to take some time. And you have to be a little bit patient. And it looks like uh, the, the news is out there that Trump is about it today is going to have some more executive orders to uh, to sign into into existence. He's, today is expected to order the, uh, the Mexican border wall and to further curtail immigration. Um, well, that was yesterday. And he did it. Did he not? So, and, and, and today he's expected to, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know when they're going to start on the construction. But understand, folks, that, that much of the, uh, some of the funding has already been approved by Congress, uh, way back when GW was president, and it never got used. So it's it's still sitting there, it's still approved, evidently. Um, now I I haven't I don't think there was any expiration on when the money had to be used or spent to build, but understand that that, that it uh, the money was at least at one point it was approved to build a portion of the wall. Now is he going to have to go back to Congress to get more money for the wall? It depends on the design of the wall. It really depends on the design. And I, as I've said before, the wall doesn't have to be pretty, you know, aesthetically pleasing, although Trump said it was going to be a big, beautiful wall. Now, I, we know what Trump thinks is beauty, uh, beauty is. That might be costly, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Uh, but maybe just the fact that the wall is actually built in certain places, no matter, you know, what materials that they use, is the actual beauty of it. And I have mentioned before they they have the, the you know those those uh, those steel plates you know those um, those terraforming plates where they you know, they use them for you know when they do bridge construction to to to, to re, uh, they're retur- retain retain uh, retaining plates and these things could be a hundred feet long or more but they have these you know the, these uh, these big crane type of machines that 
pound these things, these plates into the ground and, uh, and, and they vibrate them into the ground and then they vibrate them back out again. But it, it takes some doing, but they're quick and it does the job and they don't move and they're hard to, they're hard to cut through. They're hard to, you know, they're, they're tall. You got a hundred, you got a hundred foot long plate and they're, they're quick to, to manufacture too, by the way. So they're not very costly. They're easy to transport, so you can get tons of these things built in a, in it, uh, you know, uh, delivered and set up in a jiffy. You can pound this thing if it's a hundred feet long, fifty feet into the ground, and it sticks up fifty feet in the air. Well, that's that's going to make it very difficult for anybody to get over, or get under. Seriously. Yeah, I mean, because now they're talking about, well, you know, the uh, the, the Mexicans and then the smugglers are all out there trying to, to now they're, they're building tons and tons of new tunnels. Well, how do you know they're building new tunnels? If you know they're building new tunnels, then you obviously know where they're building them. Uh, yeah, I know. The, the other problem is, is that we've had we've had um, stories about Mexico, you know, finding finding tunnels and the U.S. side being filled in. But the Mexican side. Uh, still being open and not filled in. And folks, this is where Mexi- the Mexican government is being caught. You know, now that Trump is elected, and they keep saying, we're not, we're not paying for no dang wall, man. You pay for your own effing wall, man. They realize they're, between, they're caught between a rock and a hard place. Because now Trump also wants to renegotiate NAFTA. Now, Got some news here for uh, from Mexico. Well, if we don't like the negotiations of NAFTA, we'll walk. The problem is, Mexico walking away from NAFTA doesn't really hurt the USA, nor Canada. It really hurts Mexico. Yeah, yeah, that's what's that's what's going to hurt. Now you could say, well, it's going to force Mexico to do business with uh, South America, Central and South America. Well, there's only a couple of countries in Central and South America that can actually that are actually moving forward into the 21st century. And one of them right now is in governmental upheaval. So you, Mexico really only has one real trading partner possibility down in South America, and that's Brazil. Because Venezuela is a, is a shithole. Yeah, I said it. At the moment. They're, they're not going to be a very good trading partner. Well, maybe you got Ecuador, but Ecuador doesn't really have a population. So th- that's about it. Are they going to turn to uh, Ecuador uses the U.S. currency as their official currency, by the way. So they're not going to be able to get much out of Ecuador either. Which is why a lot of Americans are, are moving to Ecuador and Ecuador's housing. Ecuador is, is having uh, an inflation problem in their real estate because Americans are moving there because one. It's a it's a pretty lax type of government. Um, you know, it's kind of loosely based on the U.S. They use the U.S. dollar down there for their official currency, not their own. Uh, their economy is very similar well, it, to the U.S. As, as, as far as how it works, and Americans can easily understand it. But it's che- a lot cheaper than most places here in the U.S.A. So people are running down there, buying up property, and that's causing the price of real estate, you know, pretty much like in California, to start to rise. And it's starting to rise out of uh, the affordability range for Ecuadorians. So now Ecuadorians are kind of starting to get mad at Americans. I mean, we're flooding the country with cash, obviously, but they're kind of getting mad at us now because we're causing their real estate prices to become out of reach for the locals. That's kind of what happened in you know, California and other major cities. But, um, yeah. So, but th- th- there's uh, tons more in the paper pile this morning. Some of the stuff you probably haven't heard and probably won't hear the other talking heads talk about. Uh, and, and just like my explanation of the, uh, the, has anybody explained the executive order process to you before? I I don't think I've heard anybody explain it. Because everybody thinks that I talk to thinks that, oh yeah, it just takes a few minutes to, to pound that sucker out. And it doesn't. Take some time. But they're coming, folks. Be patient. Those executive orders are coming. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Echo Show. 
Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800 595 2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595 2614 to take your call now. Call 800 595 2614. That's 800 595 2614. Again, 800 595 2614. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. Six zero three eight three five three two two six. Later today, uh, at the 10 o'clock hour, uh, today is hump day, Wednesday. Uh, and what we're trying to do from this day forward, for as long as he's uh, he's up for it, we will have our intelligence report. Should call it something pretty cool, though. I should come up with a name. Um, you know, I'm pretty creative. But I should come up with a name. Uh, I've got my undercover operative out there, and uh, he's going to be in uh, on in the ten o'clock hour to give us his weekly report of what the hell is going on in the intelligence community and t- give it give us the inside skinny from somebody who's been on the inside. Because, you know, you can't trust the lamestream media. You just can't trust them. And that's that's sorry and sad to say that you can't trust the, the lamestream media. I, I don't I don't know why what what the hell is wrong with wrong with people when it comes to that that sort of thing. Uh, when it comes to telling the truth. I, I know we've got this so-called they used they're 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 doubling down on it, and I wish they wouldn't. But uh, Kellyanne Conway's uh, uh, dis- description of the truth as being alt alternative or alt alt facts, and uh, you had um, um, Sp- a Spicer yesterday, uh, you know, kind of using the same terminology and doubling down on it, and I wish they wouldn't, because they're not alternative facts; they're just the truth. They're 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 the facts, you know, because we still hear about about Trump being upset about them, you know, the, the news faking the the inauguration uh, pictures and the inauguration numbers. But he's right, and that, now that this whole thing is, you know, you got people saying, well, there's no evidence, uh, you know, because Trump mentioned that, um, you know, a number of times now that that there was voter fraud, massive voter fraud, and we have these stupid, idi- well, they're not stupid. They're just trying to pull off the same thing. 
is by saying, well, there, there's no proof or evidence of fraud, voter fraud. How can you say that there's voter fraud? Um, yeah, there is proof of voter fraud. We've got all kinds of proof. You've got people that went to jail during the 2008, uh, because of the 2008 election and voter fraud there. You've got people that went to jail during the 2012 uh, election because of voter fraud there. Not to mention, well, there hasn't been, I don't think there's anybody been arrested yet uh, for the uh, 2016 election. But we know that there's been fraud out there because, well, we, we know that there's some, the numbers are, and this is, you know, this has been reported, some 4 million potential dead people have uh, potentially voted this this time around. That's, you know, little, that's, that's just a small number, I guess, 4 million. Remember Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by 2.8 million. Well, 4 million dead people evidently voted. That's easy to prove, by the way. Just go down the voter, voter rolls and see if somebody voted and then see if they're actually dead. See if they were dead at the time of the vote. That's pretty easy to prove. The problem is, is you don't know which way the vote went. So you can't disqualify that vote. Because you don't know who they voted for. Most likely they voted for a Democrat. And then, of course, you've got you've got the actual real the number I just heard yesterday is up to 50, almost 50 percent more than because it was at 37 percent. And now it's at nearly 50 percent of the precincts in Detroit, Michigan alone. Could have possibly derailed the recount. Because they had more votes counted than the machine registered so in other words uh, as an example that in one particular uh, uh polling precinct they had over 330 votes but only 50 ballots well how does that happen that's not voter fraud that's not evidence there it is right there in one freaking precinct and nearly half the precincts in detroit had this problem So, you know, if you want to talk about invalidating and disenfranchising the voter, this is what the Democrats do constantly and by cheating. They do it by cheating. Uh, whoops, look at the time here, folks. We're way over. Sorry about that, affiliates. We'll be right back. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved. And four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed,
could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. They made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. Warning. Listening to The Rod Eccles Show by the idiot left may cause outrage, fear, a need for safety pins and or spaces. If you experience any of these symptoms or are allergic to truth, tune in and learn something, Snowflake. Six zero three eight three five three two two six. Welcome back. You're still listening to yours truly. The uh, the rod of truth, the lightning rod of truth, the hammer of truth, all that wonderful stuff. All those uh, got got to love those nicknames. Um, speaking of which, here's some. Well, it's, this is a little bit on the on the lighter side, but. This is this might be important for a lot of people because you got to wonder, you know, if Donald Trump is. Um, by the way, speaking of Trump, uh, and I was going to talk about his hair. Uh, you know who's somebody else who's got uh, who's probably going to end up looking like his father as far as his hair is concerned is a little Baron. Now Baron has got a head full of hair, man. That's he's got a lot of hair on that head. Um. And that's a good thing for him. Now, I've said it before. The, you know, he's a 10-year-old kid. He's tall for 10, by the way. Very tall for 10. Uh, but he's adorable. And they actually have some pictures of him now smiling. And that's good because he's he's adorable. He's an adorable little 10-year-old. There's, I don't see any issue with him at all i don't know why the left because the left the left really just shows where their hearts are when they start picking on this kid and evidently a saturday night live writer was suspended 
for making fun of and saying some pretty nasty things about Barron. And I have said before that the kids, I don't care who the kids are, you leave them alone. It's not their fault or their responsibility at all that their parents are involved in politics. And this kid just got thrust into the limelight. He didn't ask for it. I am sure uh, just looking at his mannerisms when he's in front of crowds or when there are crowds around him, he's shy as hell. I mean, these people probably scared the death out of this kid. And uh, he should be left alone. He's only 10. You realize he's only going to be a freshman in high school when his dad's first term is up. I mean, when, uh, kids, are, kids are just, in my book, they're just off limits. And the left, no matter how many people tell them they're off limits. No matter how many times we remind them that, that Sasha and Malia were off limits. Uh, e- even when you got Clinton's child coming out, well, she she did a backhanded protection on Barron. Uh, even she was out there saying, that, you know, you got to leave Barron alone. They still want to go after this kid. I just don't understand it. You hate his father so much. He He's only been on this planet a decade. He has not even had an opportunity to make make his mark on the planet. He's not even old enough to really have an opinion about anything yet. And yet they want to attack him because they don't like his daddy? I mean, come on. I'm so I just where if I ever see that kind of stuff, I I'm going to I'm sorry. I, I don't normally do this kind of thing, but if I see anybody anywhere in social media that attacks Baron Trump again, I am going to flag it. I'm going to complain about it because it's just not right. It's not the right. You got a beef with, with uh, daddy Trump. Fine. You don't take it out on kid Trump. You got a beef with his older brothers and sisters. Fine. They're adults. They can defend themselves. Go after them. But you leave the 10 year old kid alone. And I, I'm not going to put up with it anymore. If I see it, I'm going to say something about it. I'm going to flag it or do whatever, you know, report it, what have you, because it is unnecessary, it is uncalled for, it is uncouth, it is uncivilized, and it's just plain mean. I, I, it, I can't believe that the liberals would be attacking ki- Well, I don't know. I don't know why I'm surprised by that, really. And... You, you, and these these are supposed to be people that claim that they're that they're all loving, all caring, um, open minded. Just what a bunch of hogwash. Well, here's something else that you know that guy got on that because of because of Trump's hair. But here, you know, if anybody out there wants wants to keep their hair or wants to have Trump, Evan, you know, his his comb over really isn't much of a. If you ever look at some pictures of Trump going back. You know, a couple of decades. He's had this hairstyle ever since like the 80s. Um, and, and if you ever see pictures of his dad, Fred, his dad, Fred, had a full head of hair, too. Now, I don't know if it was a toupee or not, but his dad had a pretty, pretty full head of hair. I know you're supposed to get you're supposed to get um, your hair from your maternal side. So you're, you're, you inherit your hair follicles, I guess, from your mother. Um, so I don't know what his maternal you know what their coifs were like. Uh, I don't haven't seen many pictures of his of his maternal grandparents, but evidently, you know, well, you know, little Baron's got got the same kind of hair as his dad had. And if you ever saw pictures, if you ever see pictures of Trump, uh, of Donald at the uh, at at around Baron's age, my God, you'd think they're the same person. The resemblance is just uncanny. They're twins born like 68 years or 60 years apart, um, basically. Um, but anyway, because, you know, it's, it's, I, I was watched a, uh, uh, over the weekend, I watched another, you know, it, was a, it was a PBS um, thing on Trump. And I, I thought, well, I know it's going to be very slanted against him. And it was, but I decided to watch it anyway. And they and they showed you know where Trump came from, his pictures, and as a child. I mean, um, am I looking at Donald or am I looking at Barron? 
um, because he looks that. And there are other, you know, you look at Don Jr., such a resemblance to his father. It's especially at their same ages. Now, look at Don Don Jr. He's like 38, 40 years old. Um, If you look at pictures of Donald Trump back in the 80s when he was around that age, and him and Don Jr. look an awful lot alike. The resemblance is uncanny. Um, Just so, I don't know. Maybe No, there doesn't seem to be that same kind of resemblance with Eric. I think Eric probably, well, he doesn't look like his mom now, but I think when he was a kid, there's there's more resemblance to Ivanka. His mother. Um, same with Ivana. Although you can definitely tell Ivana is Donald Trump's child because there is some definite Donald in her. But um, she's a beautiful girl, by the way. I don't care what the left says. Ivanka Trump is gorgeous. Uh, just, just saying. I can be a little smitten <laughs> with Ivanka. She's a beautiful woman. Uh, is that a, is that wrong of me to say to me? Well, anyway, I don't think so. You know, I can appreciate beauty without being crass and crude. I don't think that the left can. The left thinks that they would probably think that that's a bad thing to, to do, to, to point out Ivanka is a, a beautiful woman. Well, she is. You know, I'm not going to take it back. I'm not going to apologize for it. She's a looker. And so is Melania. Our first lady is a looker. Isn't that the, the term that, that we used to use, at least? I don't think it's still in vogue, but, yeah, Ivanka is a, a looker, too. She's a gorgeous woman. And she's almost 50, by the way. She's like 48, 49. Just, just saying. I know you're not supposed to re- talk about a woman's age, but it's out there. So, But if you want beautiful hair... You can use alternative methods other than these wonderful chemicals that we have going on. Going on. Now, I don't know if this kind of stuff works as well as things like, um, well, I could, I, you know, Rogaine is a, is a brand name. It isn't, you know, I, I don't know what they actually call it. It's kind of like Kleenex is a brand name. It's facial tissue is the actual thing. And Kleenex is a brand. Um, minoxidil, is right? Minoxidil, is that what Rogaine basically is? Uh, I'm I don't, I don't use it. I don't need it. Knock on wood. Thank, thank goodness. But if you can, there are some alternatives out there because people always complain about the price of drugs and things. Well, there, there are cheaper alternatives uh, to gain good health. We don't need government stepping in and taking over uh, the cost. The problem is, is that, you know, like vitamin C, vitamin C is the only thing that we have that we know of right now that cures and or prevents scurvy. But you cannot say that because vitamin C then becomes a drug and you got to go through all these FDA drug trials to prove that it works and that it's safe. Well, it's vitamin C. You eat an orange, you get rid of it. But nobody can say that. Well, Trump is wants to remove some of those obstacles. And uh, so go, go more natural. Here's a natural way to help help you keep your hair, make your hair look a lot better, and that's adding sugar to your current shampoo. Yeah, just regular sugar. You mix it in with uh, with uh, uh, sugar granules in with your shampoo, and what it does is it somehow exfoliates the roots and your scalp, removing a lot of the. It also helps with with dandruff, by the way, uh, evidently. So. Just adding adding a, a, a teaspoon or, or tablespoon to your regular size shampoo bottle. Not only you're not, you shouldn't use it every day, according to this. Now, uh, Dr. Francis Fusco, F-U-S-C-O, a dermatologist at Wexler Dermatology, says that by adding a tablespoon of sugar to your favorite shampoo will actually help you, that shampoo work better, mo- especially in moisturizing shampoo. Because that exfoliates the scalp, and you should only use it no more than three times a week. So I guess you're going to have to have two two bottles. If you shampoo your hair every day, you're going to have to have two bottles of it, one with the sugar and one without. It also helps your conditioner. If you use a separate conditioner, it helps it work better. Um, and and if you use some sort of hair oil uh, to moisturize your hair, it helps that work better. So a maximum of three times a week, just put, uh, put a tablespoon of sugar, mix it in there with your, sh- your regular shampoo. Maximum of three times a week. It's supposed to give you 
Beautiful hair, beautiful locks. Uh, I might try it. I don't uh, currently have a problem with, you know, with, I still have near, I probably have 99% of the hair I had when I was a teenager, so I don't think I'm really in trouble. My dad passed away at the age of uh, over 70 with a full head of hair, um, and he was not very gray either. So I'm kind of hoping that I can take after him. And my grandfather on my mother's side, my maternal grandfather, uh, he was 74 when he passed away, 74 or 75. And he had a full head of hair, very little, less gray than my dad. And he didn't color his hair. He was a Southern Baptist minister. The interesting thing about my grandfather is, is that he had absolutely straight jet black hair. Well, he was, you know, part a Osage, which is a Native American tribe. He was part Osage Indian. And I guess he had straight, as far as I can remember, he had straight jet black hair. And he didn't use a chemical straightener or any tools or anything. It was just the way his hair was. Um, and he died with a full head of hair. So I'm, I'm looking pretty good there. But you can also add things like, uh, utilize things like rosemary, peppermint, aloe, and ginseng to your shampoos. And that, those, are, those and those combinations are supposed, supposed to help regrow hair, stimulate the, uh, the hair follicles to grow again. So if you're going bald or you're getting a widow's beak or you're getting receding hairlines, you might want to try adding some rosemary, peppermint, uh, some aloe and ginseng to your shampoo, as well as a few other um, natural ingredients to help you bring your hair back. Uh, again, I this is what they're this is what these uh, these natural natural types of people say. I don't I don't I I could test it for you, but I wouldn't know if it worked because you know you've seen pictures of me. I still have a full head of hair. So if you if you if you are losing your hair, try some of this stuff. Come back to me. Report back to me in about six months or so as whether or not this stuff works. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 it started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand, and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must-read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past, and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis' book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you.
Go ahead and try those wonderful remedies for beautiful hair. Um, I also happen to know that, uh, and and I do use this, uh, olive oil mixed with a little bit of tea tree oil, it makes a great moisturizer for your hair. Now, you, you don't put a lot of it on. I mean, I know some people will, will try to cake it on, but you, just a little bit. It's all, olive oil is very good. It, it, adds, it adds sheen to your hair. Uh, it makes your hair stronger and more resilient, doesn't break off as much, and uh Tea tree oil is supposed to help with, um, uh, you know, flaking of your scalp and dandruff and things like that. I don't have a dandruff problem, but, you know, it's, you know, I wear a lot of dark clothing, dark suits, so it's kind of nice to make sure you don't have flakes on your, on your suit because that sort of takes away from your professionalism uh, when people notice. You ever notice that people have dandruff on their, on their suits and you're like, you, you concentrate on that for some stupid reason. Uh, it's just, it's a natural thing for you to, for most of us to have, but you know, we sort of, frown, we've gotten to this point where we frown on natural things. So a little bit of tea tree oil also helps and it smells nice. Tea tree, oil, tea tree oil actually smells pretty nice. Hey, you have this, um, there's a report out there about that. Now, look, we knew this was coming anyway. We knew it was coming, but PJ media, as well as other outlets are reporting that ISIS is has unveiled their weaponized drone program and they did it in a video evidently uh and it, it was look we have our own police departments in this country that are that are asking to be able to legally put non-lethal weapons on drones um well you, you know that that's only going to lead to actually being able to put real weapons on a policing drone um and we have you know, we've got things are moving so fast. It, it is getting scary out there. I mean, so now, now, you're, now you're getting uh, you're getting terror states and terror groups uh, that are getting that, that are learning how to 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 weaponize drones. And drones are you know they're hard to spot, they're hard to see, uh, and 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 they're they're quick little buggers. And we're just now starting to develop anti-drone technology uh, and, st- and just starting to deploy some of that. Uh, it's important. Can you imagine just having a drone that's, you know, has explosive on a C4 charge on it or something flying into a building? I mean, it's not going to most likely it's not going to bring a, you know, a building down, but it can do some damage and kill people. So now we gotta have, now we gotta start deploying these anti this anti drone technology. Um, not to mention a, a couple of weeks ago, I brought to you the story about the military using uh, drone swarms, basically uh, not not micro drones, but I, well, is it micro or is it nano? Uh, one of the not not the real tiny, but just making a swarm of drones and releasing them. And the Air Force uh, successfully tested uh, had a couple of tests on those. So drones are now now a permanent part of our security and military psyche. Yeah, folks, it, it definitely is a brand new brave world out there. America is America because it is so American. The children, they are the future of children, and she loves the children. Diversity is diverse when diversity is diversified. For a future you can see, for a future that brings with it all the hopes of tomorrow, by doing everything we did yesterday, we need a leader, we need a champion. We need her. Vote for me. It's enough now. Give me it. It's mine. I want it. Just give me it. I want it now. Stop asking questions and just give it to her already. Or you're a sexist racist. Paid for by criminals and idiots for Hillary Clinton. Because let's face it, you have to be one or the other to vote for this complete monster. 
The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all. The few, the proud, the Marines. The following letters were written by our troops. Hello. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them, but don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support, visit americasupportsyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. We leave no warrior behind. Wounded Warrior Project is a nonprofit organization created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war. Whether those scars are physical or mental, we're here to make sure that they heal. And whether it's helping those with post-traumatic stress disorder live a normal life again or giving much-needed support to injured warriors and veterans' hospitals. Because no one deserves our help more than the men and women who risk their lives to keep us safe. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind. Ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill, a breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. 
Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. You want to know what time it is? It's time to bring the rain. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Welcome back, all of you beautiful Ecclesiastites and Liberty Lovers all across the globe. Yes, it is I, your lovable host, once again, Elrod, coming to you live from the Bunker Eye studio somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is, still live free or die. And yeah, I did check again this morning, and no, it hasn't changed. It's still live free or die. Here it is, hump day, Wednesday, January the 25th, in the year of our Lord, 2017, uh, the fifth day of a Trump presidency, uh, and we are all much better for it already. Call in number is 603 835 3226. And right now we have holding on the phone my inside intelligence officer uh, here to give us some intel. So, uh, what are we going to call this? Intelligence insight? Really, well, talk to you. I have no problems with that. Kind of sounds <laughs> smart. Yeah, well, well, yeah, because we're very, we're very erudite. We're very intelligent. Uh, by the way, can, oh, yeah. you know, before we get into what you what you got for us this morning, let, let me address some people. And I know some of you are listening out there. Uh, you Twitter people, you, you some of you people are just, you know. You, you get into these little – I get into these little Twitter banters with people, and, and I don't really get upset with people on, usually on Twitter. But there are just a couple of people that are – they're, they're kind of like flies, and they bug me every once in a while. Um, and they – it's very difficult to get sarcasm my, – my form of sarcasm through on Twitter. And uh, they seem to think that – because I misspell a word. Now, of course, I know if a word's going to be misspelled because my computer tells me that the word is misspelled. You got the little red line under it. But I misspell it on purpose. I mean, uh, you know, I got people tell me it's not business, Rod. It's business. Like, do you miss the irony and sarcasm that I'm trying to, uh, you know, imply here when I say business? You know, B-I-D? Not, I know, or, or B-I-Z? I know it's not it's B I I really folks I mean come on it, but you know what they try to do is they try to because they're liberal they try to come across as being very erudite and smarter than everybody else so they want to point out that you misspelled something or your grammar's off do we have grammar police on Twitter really really I mean seriously millennials want to be grammar and spelling police I'll be damned if I let some you know millennial little schmuck try to Try to be a, a, a erudite grammar Nazi on me. That's ridiculous. Just, just saying, folks. And okay, now I got that off my chest. 
So what have we got this morning in our in uh, Intel report? No, it's like this. For the past week, I've been sitting back and I've been watching the reaction of not just the press, but certain individuals that were involved with the were make that stress that were involved in the intelligence community and then those that are involved in the intelligence community to this day. And I'm looking at the press and then I'm looking at these former um, intel personnel and I'm starting to notice like this major trend here where they these guys for the most part are lining up with the media. Prime example, Brennan perfect example right there. And there's a couple of yahoos that I've seen online that declare themselves to be intelligence experts when the fact of the matter is that they've, not, they've never really left. They've never gone outside the wire. That's the terminology that we, we use in the military and in the intelligence world. They've never really gone outside the wire. They've never really lived with the people of the country they're in or surrounded by those people have never lived in that society within itself. They just live within the safety and the confines of being inside the wire. So they're like blasting away. And then I started doing some research on some of these other people. And I noticed one thing about them, that, like I said, they've never been outside the wire. And these are just knuckleheads that their main job was to be an analyst and then to give a briefing. Now, in the intel world, you can tell who's gone out there and who hasn't. The ones that are going outside the wire, they're more low-key. They're like, yeah, whatever, dude, you're an idiot, you're, you're, you're dumb, blah, blah. Very blunt, to the point, almost abrasive. But the ones that did the briefing, they're like, well, I briefed Mr. So-and-so, and therefore I am an expert. I have his full confidence. You have this full confidence because somebody else did the dirty work. Then somebody else put the pieces of the puzzle together. You watched while all this was going on, and then you ran off and started saying, well, we have your information for you. So because you talk pretty, you have their full confidence, just like politicians. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm saying is that there are politicians within the intel community. And... These guys, these individuals, I should say, because it's not just restricted to men, but these individuals, for the most part, they love to take the credit for the work of others. Now, Brennan, if we look back at the video of when President Trump visited the CIA, you notice that when he said how much the media lies, did you notice that there wasn't dead silence, but quite the opposite? It was hooping and hollering and applaud and cheering him on. The media have been the intelligence agency's worst nightmare. I'm not going to say enemy, but I will say nightmare. Because they want to know more than the intelligence media. What are you doing? What are you up to? What is going on? Now, when Snowden came out, there were things that needed to be explained. Because now... What Snowden revealed, I was not part of that. That was not my my classification. I wasn't involved in that. I, I started off as counter narcotics in Central and South America. Then I moved on to Europe to do counter terrorism. But Snowden, to me, in my honest opinion, and I'm not a liberal, mind you, in my honest opinion, yeah, America did need to know about that. Now. He was an individual that did have a conscience, unlike Manning. The truth about Manning is I knew Charles uh, Manning. I knew him, spoke with him just before he deployed. And the reason why Manning stated, you know, I was messed up in the head, now that's complete and total rubbish. Manning was upset because Manning had to deploy, and Manning didn't want to deploy. Manning wanted to stay home at Fort Meade in Maryland, playing video games online with his little gang. That's the truth of the matter. Manny was just upset because he was told, you are deploying. End of story. Period. That is the facts. And, and it, we well, in the intelligence community... Go ahead, I'm sorry. So we, we have these, we have these pe- people that are, that are 
well, I mean, so they're in the wire and they're out of the wire. I think people should probably understand, you know, the, being in the loop and out of the loop. So we have these poli- po- politicos um, that uh, that cloak themselves as an intelligence operative when really they're just the person that's that's gathering all the the intel together and then reporting it to the president or those who need to know. Uh, and, uh, and, and they're being, and, and surprise, surprise, they're very political. Um, you know, we, we have oh, this, yeah. uh, we, now we have this, uh, we have, uh, this, the secret service agent out, out West that says that she won't take a bullet for, for the president, which, you know, I mean, uh, how do you weed these kinds of people out? And if, if the president or one of, you know, his cabinet members decides to do that, uh, how do they do it without? Because one of the, one of the things that, that that the left has put out there on Trump is that Trump shouldn't take on the intelligence community because you know, hey, uh, President Kennedy did that, and look what happened to him. Kennedy didn't take on the intelligence community. Kennedy took on a law enforcement agency because that's exactly what the FBI is. They are law enforcement. No hands if about the box. Now, do they have intelligence gathering capabilities? Yes, they do. But so does NYPD. NYPD has intelligence gathering capability. The other thing is that the FBI is just much bigger, much broader. But the one thing that people need to understand, especially the left, especially these politicians that are turning around and saying that Trump should not be taking on the intelligence community, the intelligence community also needs to be held accountable. They cannot be given free reign. And this is somebody who was in the intelligence community, because when free reign was given by two former presidents, well, we were eavesdropping on everybody's conversations. We were listening to their conversations, collecting metadata on everybody in this country, or almost everybody in this country. So there have to be certain limits. There has to be certain guidelines. Those guidelines do exist. They are in place, but certain politicians, they pick and choose when to enforce these guidelines, when to make sure they're being followed, make sure when they're being adhered to, when they should be adhered to 24-7. The United States has so many intelligence organizations, they're stepping on each other's toes left and right. So somebody decided, well, we're going to create another one. We're going to create the Department of Homeland Security, and they're going to watch over all the intelligence organizations. Okay, so that's basically like saying, all right, here's a roaring fire. How do we control this roaring fire? I have an idea. Throw another log in there. Makes no sense. Now, now Makes I, no I think what sense. we got, we have, a, a, and, and th- look, I didn't, bef- before this year, I didn't realize that we had some 17 intelligence classified agencies and i'm thinking 17 do we really need 17 okay and then i started looking at the list and realized that that probably six or seven of them are actually military the different branches uh even the coast guard Mm -hmm. has its own you know uh intelligence uh department so i i guess I, i i understand that um but do we need do we really need that? I mean, these guys are often, if they're out in the field, um, half the time they don't even know who their friend is who's a fellow American intel agent with another department because nobody talks to each other. So they're kind of running into each other. And I wonder, I got to wonder how many times these guys, you know, because, you know, the 007 license to kill type of thing, I wonder how many of them have offed a fellow American intelligence officer. By accident, because they didn't know I'd they were rather, there. Does that happen? I'd rather not comment on that. Oh, oh, oh that, a lot, that tells us a lot then. Um, so we, we, we have these different intel agencies, and they still don't – they still – even though that they're, now we have this uh, you know, Department of Homeland Security and supposed to facilitate interdepartmental um, communication, is that really happening now? Not as well as it should. And also, sorry, not as well as it should. I mean, here's, here's my question to you. Here we have the Department of Homeland Security. Now, the director of, the whole, of that department oversees just about every single one of the intelligence organizations, including the leadership for these intel groups. Where was that department head when Bre- 
Ukraine was shooting his mouth off and politicizing the CIA. Why wasn't that director telling him, know your lane, slow your roll, shut up? Never happened, did it? It I never happened. I don't believe so, no. So it's not working as well as it should. <clears throat> now, these CIA personnel that were at Trump's speech at, the, at, uh, at Langley, they stood up and they applauded against the media. In fact, when he came in, they stood up and applauded. They applauded a few times for this, for the president, because they now understand that the, the number one politician in the CIA is gone. He is gone. Now so so there is no, being, because the media was putting out there that there is this rancor and dislike between the intelligence community and the new president, and... If it, it, obviously him going over to the CIA and giving that speech, if we actually heard all the the whooping and ho- hollering and cheering, that would put a kibosh on that type of reporting. So they muzzle that. So there really isn't, uh, as far as the rank and file, there there isn't a disdain for Trump, is there? Well, I mean, of course you're going to have like individuals that feel that somebody else should have been better at that position. I mean, take a look at you know O'Grady you know, a Secret Service agent where she said, you know, she'd rather go to prison than take a bullet. Of course you're going to have individuals that have their political ideologies and their political ideas, but that has to be set aside for the good of the country. That has to be set aside in order to get the job done and give 100% proficiency and 100%, you know, of yourself into the job to make sure that the citizens of this country are safe and as well as our allies. So, that all that a true professional puts that aside, and you know, I, I mean, I don't know if you watched the uh, the press conference that Spicer had the following day, where somebody in the press asked him a question: Is it true that the first three rows were people that were part of the Trump administration and they led the applause? And come to find out, no, it wasn't. That ABC News got that from an insider leak that the first three rows were part of the Trump administration when that whole thing was false. So, of course, the press is going to continue pushing it because they can't believe the fact that the CIA, the analysts, the operatives, you know, these individuals that actually do the work support the president of the United States. They can't believe that. They want to have this concept that they were being coaxed to to applaud the man, that they were being egged on, because if not, oh, well, that's going to be the end of their career because he made a joke and everybody laughed and then applauded. In fact, I forgot who it was. Oh yeah. Juan Williams from Fox news. He said, well, of course they laughed and they applauded loudly because they don't want the end of their careers. Well, obviously Mr. Juan Williams has never heard of polite, you know, a polite chuckle. You're polite when you laugh at somebody's joke, even though it's not funny, you're just being polite. You don't stand there and applaud well, you know, rise to your feet, applaud for the joke, and just cheer out the way the entire room did. Because that's exactly what happened if you look at the video. A polite chuckle is one thing. What these guys are doing, they approve of the man, period. Well, I think maybe, you know, hopefully he can, uh, uh, now the rumor is that he's going to somehow, I don't know how, uh, obviously these people are smarter than I in this area, I don't know how you would uh, realign and and uh, reformulate how these groups work. Do you think that is what's on Trump's plate? He's going to actually make these people uh, be more efficient and, and work more closely together? Is he really going to do that kind of alignment? And and will they will these in different intelligence agencies, will they welcome that? Because before we were told they didn't like to talk to each other. Are, are they going to welcome this new type of uh, communication and interagency cooperation? Pre-9-11, we didn't talk to each other. Then 9-11 happened. And then we were told, you guys have to talk to each other. You know, and the heads were saying, okay, okay, okay. Well, then, lo and behold, they still didn't talk to each other. You know, and then you have the Department of Homeland Security, where they're saying, well, talk to each other and give us all your information, and, you know, we'll monitor you, and we are the lead department. We're in charge of the security of this country, you know, here and abroad. Okay, fine. They still don't talk to each other. 
FBI needs to go back to its role of, you know, law enforcement and intelligence gathering in the United States. If anything goes outside of the United States or if they need any information about anything going on outside of the United States because it's possibly coming in, you go to the CIA. If you want to get intelligence on signals, on computer hacking and so on and so forth, because the CIA has this thing that computer hacking is their thing. Okay, yeah, well, you know what? You're pretty good at it. But I got news for you. That's now the realm since 1952. You know, in signals intelligence was the realm of the NSA. And then with the advent of the computers, that also fell under the NSA. And now you have cybersecurity or cyber command who's involved in, you know, protecting our Internet, which they haven't been doing all that great lately. So, therefore, everybody needs to go back to knowing their lane. They do. Hold, to, hold on for a second. You know your yes. lane. See, hold, hold on for a second. Yeah. We've got to take a quick break. Uh, hold, I, I want you to come back and explain a little bit more. Sure. You're listening to The Rod Echoes Show, the coolest, most politically incorrect, conservative black man on the planet. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. So we're here talking with my intelligence officer. Uh, he's my own... Uh, yeah, see, I'm getting my own private security team and intel team gathered here, right here. Uh, but we're, he was talking about uh, some operations that that, uh, that these different agencies do handle, and unfortunately we had to break. And you know, I got to pay the bills around here somehow. I can't pull all this stuff out of all cash out of my pocket. So, CS, can you hang on through this break and then come back at the, and we'll we'll continue this conversation and enlighten our our uh, audience. Yeah, no problem. All right. So, uh, you know, folks, don't don't go anywhere. We'll be. We'll be right back, I guess, as we always are, because, you know, you can't get rid of me, right? I know people are trying, but they just can't do it.
The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. Woo! There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. 
I'm not Rod Eccles, and I approve this message. Six zero three eight three five three two two six. That's the number to utilize should you wish to call the program here this Wednesday hump day morning. We're still on the line here with uh, with my intel officer, and uh, he's uh, bringing. You know, I think I could probably have to come up with a with an intel report theme song. You have to find one. Uh, so whenever whenever we play it, everybody knows that that you're here. Uh, but we were talking about. Or you were talking about the, how these these agencies interact with one another and whether or not they're actually doing what they were supposed to, what they were ordered to do back in 2001 after 9-11. Um, and now, is this something that you think that, that no, you know, let's keep in mind that Trump is not a politician. So outside of Washington, D.C. Or, or within Washington, D.C., he's a neophyte. He doesn't really know how all that stuff really works. Do you think he's going to be able to make some significant real changes? I mean, changes were supposed to have already been made, and evidently they weren't made the way that they were supposed to have been made. Do you think he's going to actually be able to affect that? And is that entire community uh, going to rally behind him and, and actually look forward to that? Or are these people still so secretive that they'd rather just be you know their own little fiefdom and not talk amongst each other the one thing i've observed um from president trump is that he's very astute he learns quick he knows that you can't waste time learning you've got to pick it up quick you know it's a case of pick it up and run and he he's far, far from being dim-witted. I mean, he's playing the media like they were a fiddle. He played, you know, what was it, 16 other uh, Republicans in the primaries. He played them, and he won. He went up against Hillary Clinton, and he learned quick. He won. So, you know, this is an individual that, from what I see, also has a tendency of listening to the experts. And he just doesn't listen to one expert. He listens to several others. And as an intelligent man that he is, I think I see how he thinks, how he functions. And that is that as he's listening to several experts at the same time, he picks up the common thread where they all agree, agree upon. Then he pushes that aside. He goes, okay, that has to be that's eliminated, that's out of the way because they all agree on this. I want to see where they differ. I want to see how they differ and what is their explanation for differing with each other. And he honestly, I mean, I've observed him, you know, being, you know, talking with the experts, and I see how his mind is working. And he will listen to the experts, not just within the intelligence community, but to experts that, you know, people that are experts on intelligence but are not in the intelligence communities. Like, prime example, Mr. Sebastian Gorka. You know, I have a great deal of respect for the man. He is a very intelligent man. Uh, also has a great deal of common sense, which, you know, common sense is an uncommon commodity nowadays. Yeah, and, that's true. and he applies that common sense, and he listens to Sebastian Gorka as well. So he just doesn't limit himself to the agencies, but those that are outside of the agency. And I think that he can put something together personally. And I'm not saying he should do this, because I'm not going to do a Geraldo Rivera or any of these other media experts where they're saying what he should do, what he should – no, 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 no. What I would like for myself, FBI – you're in charge of the homeland. CIA, you're outside of the homeland. NSA, you do this. DIA, you do this. And if you tell them, like the FBI, homeland, so any agents that you have outside of the United States, call them back in. Call them back in. 
period. So this is forcing all these intelligence communities that they have to speak to each other because they don't have anybody outside of their, of their little realm. The CIA cannot operate within the United States because their responsibility is outside of the United States. So if they need anything that goes on within the United States, then they have to turn to the FBI. The NSA, this is your realm. Take that away from the CIA. Take that away from the DIA. It's NSA. So now these agencies have to go to the NSA. Period. Now, can you create a liaison office? Oh, yeah. You can create a liaison office within each one of these offices, like have a liaison office from the NSA in the CIA or in the FBI. So that way they know where to go to get information. And these individuals will then call up the NSA and say, hey, we need this, we need that, we need the other thing. Now you're forcing these agencies to actually speak to each other. Because if you're going to tell them, okay, a gentleman's agreement, you're going to speak with each other? Oh, yeah, we promise. We will speak to each other. Hey, you going to lunch? Yeah, okay, we've, we've spoken to each other. That's it, we're done. We're going to do our own thing now. So... If you can't do it the nice way, well, then I'm going to make you do it. And that's the best way to do it. Take away their toys and force them to play together the right way. That's my personal opinion, though. But well, I would it, never, I, you know. It makes full, complete would, sense when it's explained explained that way. It makes sense to me. I mean, again, that's just common sense. you got to have the, I mean, the, each one has their own, uh, their own central forte uh, and expertise, obviously. And that's that's where they should they, they shouldn't be, you know, getting outside of their expertise and stepping on somebody else's realm or toes uh, and then complain when something goes wrong. Um, now, it, it, that's why we have that's why we have different levels of government. You know, we have we have local and we have state and we have federal and they each are supposed to have different roles. And that's the way it works best. So why wouldn't a depart, you know, different departments also have their separate and distinct roles and that's how they that's how they would work best so um i think that would be a great yeah i think it would be an awesome idea if we could actually get to that point once again where these where these different intelligence agencies operated with their own within their own realms of 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 expertise um so here i'll give you an example and i'm not saying it was me i'm just saying it's somebody i know this person was in Europe. Come to find out, there was an individual in Europe that was supplying ISIL with state-of-the-art laptops. That's a method of communications. That is the, within the realm of the NSA. This individual had to go into Europe, had to track down this supplier of high-grade laptops to ISIL. This person had to go through fiery hoops, literally fiery hoops uh, a couple of times chased down shot at but finally got to the person who was supplying these laptops they went in they found a warehouse full of electronics not just laptops cell phones smartphones I mean and when I mean cell phones I mean analog and digital all kinds of communications equipment going through the entire system. Now, mind you, this individual and his team, they caught this. They got this person. It is well within their rights to bring this person in for questioning. And then the CIA stepped in and said, we'll take over. Here's our directive. Okay, so I got shot at. This person was standing and going, I got shot at. A couple of times I got hit by a car. And you're going to take this from me? That is where the rift comes into play. Yeah, well, hey, hey, to say it, but we see that kind of that kind of stuff happening in movies. So you know, if it's happening in movies, it's actually happening in in real life because that's where they get the ideas from. Exactly. Um, well, CS, again, thank you so much for filling us in. We look forward to next week's Intel report. Uh, if anything else really important happens in the meantime, of course, uh, I'll, re I'll def we'll definitely reach out to you and uh, 
and have you explain it to us because you you do a wonderful job at that and and I I thank you so much for taking your the time out of your busy day. Hey, not a problem. And I will definitely speak with you next week and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday hump day afternoon, my friend. I definitely will. Have a great one. Bye. Uh, that is my Intel, inside Intel person. Um, yes, I have. Hey, uh, hey this program has grown. We're going to have microphones all over the place. We're going to have people in places that you don't think that people should be or will be from this program. We're uh, uh, My tentacles are growing here, which is a good thing, because all it is is bringing information to you that you need. Uh, speaking of information, he mentioned something about cell phones, you know, uh, analog and, and um, digital and smartphones and what have you. Uh, here's something out of Vocative. I've learned how to, to, thanks to LJ, taught me how to properly pronounce this this website's name, Vocative. Um, I don't know if I was down if I was if I was down south, I'd probably say Vocative. Or if up here in New England, it's Vocative. You know the, the erudite, but it's Vocative. I, I guess if you're in New York or Paris or L.A. Well, maybe not L.A. Chicago, maybe. You have to say vocative. Uh, maybe I should just just be mean and nasty and just say vocative. I don't even know what it means, by the way. Anybody, anybody know what it means? I haven't looked it up. I'm sure it means something. They've taken some words and put pl- pasted them together, and it means something. I haven't really looked to see where they got why they came up with the name vocative. But they're they're out there talking about your cell phones now. I, folks, I didn't know. It's kind of scary, actually. This is kind of scary. Evidently, your cell phone is able to pick up demonic demonic sounds. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Here's a story. Watch out. Demonic hidden voice commands could hijack your cell phone. Now, this actually kind of makes some sense here. Uh, we, we know that, 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 that there are things that we can put into electronics. There are sounds that can be emitted that our own ears cannot hear. I mean, uh, dog whistles. Dogs supposedly hear these dog whistles, but humans can't hear them. Um, but uh, evidently, you know, the certain kinds of dog whistles actually hurt a dog's ears. Uh, and you'll, instead of hearing them bark, they'll 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 whine um, about it because it hurts. Um, so and they, they 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 used to use those types of things in training. So there are obviously sounds out there that we cannot hear, but we can make devices that can hear the sounds with which we cannot hear. And in some cases, we can take those 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 sounds that we cannot hear and put them in the realm a wavelength that we can hear. But evidently, cell phones are able to pick up certain sounds, and they're calling them demonic sounds, that, that, can, that can actually be picked up by your smartphone, your cell phone, and somehow turn your phone against you. I'm not kidding on this, folks. Demonic sounds are usually related to evil spirits, but researchers have found a way to turn them into hidden voice commands for Android devices. Yes, a group of Ph.D. candidates at Georgetown University of California, Berkeley, developed a series of voice commands that can be recognized and executed by smartphone virtual assistants. You know, I've got these virtual assistants on my iPad and my, and my cell phone. You know, I don't use them. I do not. Every once in a while, I'll accidentally turn on, I, I guess it's with Siri on my iPad. I immediately turn her off. I don't use them. Um, and, and frankly, now I'm starting to figure, I don't know why I was, I always was kind of, it felt a little bit, um, violated by them. Maybe violated isn't the the correct word, but yeah, maybe it is. And, and I don't like using them. I mean, it's not like talking to the Star Trek commu- uh, computer. You say computer and the computer responds. It's, but then again, you got to think about. In order for that stuff to work, it's all it always has to be listening. Do, do you folks realize that? I know we're, we're entering into this brave new world, but you have to understand this artificial this the beginning. These are this is the beginning of artificial intelligence, folks. 
And this stuff always has to be listening in order to respond to your commands. That's kind of spooky and scary for me because that means if it's always listening for me, it's always listening for anything because it can't discern between, you know, uh, me and, 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 and anything else, evidently. So they've, they've found a way to issue hidden voice commands in the, in, that, that is not easily heard by human ears that can be utilized to hijack your, your electronic devices. Now, these devices are, are fantastic spy devices. As you know, there have been people that have had their, their, uh, their laptop cameras hacked and, and video recorded and placed on YouTube and other places on the web where people, you know, doing things in front of their commu- in computer. And they don't know that they're being monitored, viewed, recorded. There was even a point in time where they had this same, the same, there was an issue. Remember the smart TVs? That suppose that we're coming out with these um, uh, videos in order to, to 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 facilitate you know gaming and and other things, and found out that the, that these things were actually watching you watch TV. And of course, there was a big brouhaha, and then then it quickly went away. But those things are still out there, folks. By the way, and I think I, I a couple of months ago I, there was uh, was it Samsung. That was talking about being able to make a two-way TV screen. In other words, the entire screen would be the camera. So it would be able to facilitate, you know, the the, the Visiphone type of thing. It, they wouldn't have to have a separate camera. Well, they could if they can come up with that technology, they could put that in anything. So in other words, at some point, doing like I do and putting a little. Uh, you know, covering your the camera on your laptop or what have you would be a moot point because your entire screen would end up being the camera. Now, folks, if they can do that, and they can, and they will, because humans have this uh, this innate ability to to ignore the question, yeah, we can do it, but should we type of question, we, we don't bother with that. We just say, oh, we can do it. Great, let's do it. So, folks, that kind of stuff is coming. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do with this kind of thing? Well, people are going to have to start developing software that counters this stuff. But in the meantime, as they develop it, why would somebody develop the ability to... Now, think about this for a second. Why would somebody want to develop something that could take over your cell phone or your iPad or your tablet or place a camera, uh, make your entire screen the camera. Why would they want to do that? Well, there are nefarious reasons behind it. They, they may say, well, it's for marketing purposes. No, that's bullshit. There are nefarious reasons behind it. And if that stuff goes mainstream, and believe me, if they're already working on it and they've already got it to work, it's going to go mainstream. Because now they're going to have to sell it in order to pay for all that research. Just, uh, yeah, it's a brave new world out there, folks. Brave new world. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand, and most wouldn't believe. 
5 Plus 2 Equals Perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must-read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. Once I dreamt of chasing rainbows and lightning across the sky. Once I had a crazy thought, this thought was you and I. Late at night when darkness... Chasing rainbows. Anybody ever chase rainbows? By the way, can I ask, when, when did um, when, when did the LGBT movement co-op rainbows? And why, why does that represent the gay community now? I, I, don't, I don't know when that happened or, or, or why, but... I like rainbows. Rainbows are pretty in the sky. I mean, do you walk do you, after a rainstorm or something and you see a rainbow in the sky or a double rainbow or the very rare triple? I saw a triple rainbow once. Does Do you automatically think of LGBT, PDQ, XYZ community? I, I don't um, because rainbows are a natural thing. I, I like rainbows. Um, yeah, yeah, well... Are, are are you going to start turning off your devices, by the way? Uh, and remember, you know, one of the things that I hate is that when you go looking for something, um, when you're shopping online, and you've got you've got ad blockers and 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 anti cookie things, and yet you, when you go to places that you normally go. There you are advertising to you with your last uh, by because of items in your last search on Amazon, let's say, or anywhere. It doesn't have to be Amazon. It just it, it, it's 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 aggravating. And I know there there are these things that that you can go incognito, but somehow they still know even when you're in. I don't maybe you know if you use uh, the problem with Firefox is it doesn't work as well as Google Chrome. It really doesn't. It's slower. It's not. And, and but you know, th there are things that Firefox does that Chrome doesn't do, and vice versa. Uh, but it, it's it's really if they can do that. If they can do that, then what what key is going to keep them from doing other things to violate your privacy? Have you ever thought to yourself? I'm a leftist elite Hollywood a-hole. If so, good news. The Rod Eccles Hollywood Community College is now open, featuring such courses as unemployment is not paid vacation. No, Americans don't want to spend $19 for an order of french fries and the ever-popular shut the hell up. Why, just listen to this big-time celebrity endorsement. I'm not Rosie O'Donnell, and I think this school's offensive, sexist, and racist. And I think you're a giant a-hole who needs to shut the hell up. Hey, we teach a course in that. The Rod Eccles Hollywood Community College, where being an a-hole is not a guarantee you'll be an A student. The 
following program is recommended for mature individuals and may contain material unsuitable for morons, cretins, and dish wipes. If you are a moron or a member of the PTL club, please turn off your radio because we don't need any more stupid, narrow-minded, pencil-neck geeks who wouldn't know the First Amendment if it came up and bit them on the butt. Thank you. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved. And four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today, or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support... Visit americasupportsyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. We leave no warrior behind. Wounded Warrior Project is a nonprofit organization created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war. Whether those scars are physical or mental, we're here to make sure that they heal. And whether it's helping those with post-traumatic stress disorder live a normal life again or giving much-needed support to injured warriors and veterans' hospitals, because no one deserves our help more than the men and women who risk their lives to keep us safe. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill. 
a breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. You want to know what time it is? It's time to bring the rain. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Welcome back. Hour number three. All right. Wait, wait, did we have a first hour? We did, didn't we? Um, obviously. This is the third hour. Man, time flies when you're having fun. Welcome back. It is I, your lovable host, Elrod, coming to you live from the bunkerized uh, studio somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is live free or die. It is not big government or bust. And uh, the call-in number this morning, this Wednesday hump day, January number 25 in the year of our Lord 2017, is the same as it is every day, 603-835-3226. So you can utilize that if you wish, or if you just rather listen. Uh, Frankly, you know, excuse me, I would love to have a bunch of liberals call in, just one after the other. Um, But I'm kind of torn with that. I really am because I think that they, I think liberals should really listen to this program because I am pretty damn sure that if they listen with, listen to this program with any consistency, they will cease being liberals because they will, they will, I will have turned on that logical center in their brain. I will have pushed that logic button and they'll start to think for themselves. They'll get rid of this group think and this touchy feely think, and they'll actually begin to really think and they'll, they'll dump, their liberalism, which is why liberals don't like people, their people listening to programs like this, because they know that that's the case. Uh, How many times have you heard, heard a number of people calling, calling into Rush Limbaugh show or Sean Hannity show, or even Mark Levin show and saying, you know, I used to be a liberal Mark. And I started listening to you because I I hated you. And I heard how all the nasty things that you kept saying. And, and I I wanted to call in and, and argue with you, but I started listening and I started listening more. And I realized that you were right. They know, the liberals know that that happens. There's a lot more conversion going on from liberal to conservative than there is of conservative going to liberal. And frankly, if you are conservative converting to liberal, you were never really a conservative to begin with. It's kind of like the Warren Buffett thing. Well, Warren Buffett started out his life with, you know, supposedly he was a Republican and, and then I heard Warren Buffett say, you know, well, I realize, you know, that, that my I really aligned with Democrats because during the, the civil rights era, I found out that, you know, that both parties were kind of 
uh, evil when it came to civil rights. But the Democrats sort of got the message sooner and quicker and, and was more behind civil rights than the Republicans were. And I'm thinking, are, are, are we talking about the same two parties in the same country in the same in this same dimension? Did Warren Buffett say that the Democrats were more behind civil rights than Republicans when the Democrats were the party for a hundred years trying to block civil rights? And the Republicans were the ones trying to make sure that civil rights got instilled in this country and in the Constitution? Did I hear Warren Buffett? When I started hearing stuff like that come out of Warren Buffett's mouth and, and, and that he believed in redistribution of wealth, like when he... When he, he thinks that the government should, when he passes away, take nearly 100% of his, of his, his estate and redistribute it. And when I heard him speak very hypocritically about taxes, well, there, you know, there are some super rich, many super rich, you know, they, they, pay ta- they pay a lot in taxes to pay their fair share, but there are some, a small minority of us, evidently, I guess a small ni- minority of, this, of the minority, which is super rich, or there's a small number of them, but evidently, that minority of the super rich class, which Warren Buffett is is a member of, and he says, well, you know, some of us only pay, you know, a very small uh, amount of income taxes, which I am one. Well, uh, well, if you think you pay too little in tax, then why don't you just write a check every year for what you think is fair? Now, Grant, I think he did do that once. I don't know how much he wrote the tre- a check for to the treasurer, but I think I think somebody called him out on it, and I think one year he actually did write a check to the treasury. But why do, why don't they do that every year? Why do they got to be prompted? You know, as a businessman, as an investor, and he's not he you know if you actually look at the history of Warren Buffett, he's not all liberal gl- uh, glitz and glam. There, I mean, he's. he's there has been stuff in 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 his business past that has been, and I'm not talking about the the Solomon Brothers thing. There has been some questionable stuff in his past, especially how he how he uh, organized his companies at Berkshire Hathaway. I mean, it was so complicated that the you know the the FEC came in one day and tried to figure out what the hell was going on with in in, in his company and they were the how everything was structured and organized organized was so complicated and they say when people do stuff like that when companies are designed like that it's usually because they're hiding something now they they evidently they found enough to fine Berkshire Hathaway a hundred grand I mean that was back in the eighties I think. Uh, but no charges were filed. So this guy's not, you know, he's, you know, he's, he, what is, where is he from? Oklahoma. Uh, he, he's not the, he's not the okie doke kind of, you know, aw shucks type of guy that you, that, that you often get this notion that he is. He's not. And he's, a, he's one of these ultra rich hypocritical liberals. And he never was a conservative. And, and, and he's got this stupid, he's kind of like a, a, you know, Walton. Um, Sam Walton was the same way. You know, they made all this money. This is why liberals do not believe that the rich spend money or share their, share their wealth. Because if they're, if they're a wealthy liberal... They tend to be like, like, uh, like Sam Walton, or they tend to be like, uh, uh, which, by the way, is not not their their family is not very liberal, it's rather conservative. But they tend to be like Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett lives in the same. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not denigrating him for this. If if he likes the house, he should live in that. But he lives in the same house that he first bought when he first got married to his first wife. Nearly 40, 40 or 50 years ago. The man is 80 years old now. Never, never moved from that place. His kids understand that they're not getting hardly any inheritance. You know, they talk about, well, we, did, we, we didn't go to private school. You know, we, we live like all of our, we didn't even know we were rich, actually, because my dad never spent any money. 
So in other words, this guy was a skin flint his entire life. Now, I'm not saying you have to, you know, if you're rich, you have to flaunt it like maybe Donald Trump has done. But notice Donald Trump is not a liberal and he spends his money. Warren Buffett is a liberal, didn't spend his money. Just, I'm just pointing that out. Again, it's not good or bad that if you don't spend, I mean, don't willy-nilly waste your money. I don't have a problem with that, but you don't, you don't enjoy it if you have it. And what's the reason for having it? I mean, it just, well, it just, I, I am, I know some people are going to say, well, geez, Al, are you going to do a spin, spin, spin? No, I'm, I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm cheap in the sense that I don't like to waste stuff. I like to get the biggest bang for my dollar. I'm not poor. I'm not rich. But in any, I would always be this way, but I'm still going to enjoy what I have earned. Otherwise, what am I doing? Why am I working for it so hard for? Just so I can keep it in the bank and count my pennies every? No, no, it's, it's, it's there to enjoy. Plain and simple, but, uh, you know, just, I'm not going to just sit on a pile of pile of it and just, just, you know, be like these money misers. I mean, the, 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 I always say just be careful of what liberals want to put into public policy. Uh, and, and while they're claiming that, that it's they want to put this into public policy because the evil, rich Republicans don't do not do this or they do this, because you got to realize that it, it is the liberal who's who's doing it. And they don't get out of their own little world. So if they think, if they know that they do the c- certain things or don't do certain things, and they think that's the way everybody is. The problem is, is it's really mostly just them. You know, the old one finger pointing at somebody else and three fingers pointing back at you type of thing. That's very apropos of liberals. By the way, uh, top Republicans stand by Trump's claim of voter fraud. Yeah, we're, you know, we're told we're we, we're we're told to be, or made tried to be made to believe from the lamestream media that nobody agrees with Trump on on voter fraud. No, nobody agrees with you. Everybody thinks that you're you're full of crap, Donald. What are you talking about? Can you do you have any evidence? Can you prove that there's voter fraud? There's no evidence of it. Oh, well, there's massive evidence of it. It's just, it's just that you people on the left are ignoring the evidence. Uh, pretty pretty much like you 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 you've. You void the evidence of Barack Hussein Obama's administration being highly toxic and filled with with uh, uh, scandals. You know, I'm proud to say that in eight years, you know, I'm first modern president without a single scandal in his administration. And there were scandals every day, just about. You know, hey, I'm I'm first. You know, there there wasn't a single a single. Foreign terror attack on on American soil under my watch. Yeah, we know that's also BS. By the way, all the uh, you know he can try to get away. You could say that he was accurate if all the terror major terror attacks that happened in, the, in this country since he took office, if they were all American citizens, they weren't. Some of them were immigrants and refugees. So they were foreign entities that attacked. The Boston Sarnayev brothers, refugees. Uh, Boston bombers, yeah, they're refugees. Uh, 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 well, the, the, the Pulse nightclub, he was, I do believe he was born. I know his father was an immigrant, but I think he was born here. The shooter. Um, and, and well, there was the, the uh, was it the San Bernardino shooters, immigrants. And so, so the notion that there were there have been no foreign attacks is kind of misleading. Well, it's very that kind of it is. It's very misleading. So the notion that that there is no evidence of voter fraud is well, that's just a, that's just out out. Fraud in stating that. That's just a big fat lie. 
because we know that in two, uh, out of the 2008 and 2012 elections, people have gone to jail and at least been arrested and investigated. And, and there, there is evidence of it. Because you don't, go to, you don't get convicted in a court of law. Uh, maybe, maybe one or two of them can get railroaded into it. But there's a bunch of people in multiple states that, that, that got convicted and heavily fined and or jailed because of the fraud that they committed. During the 2008 election, uh, and 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 that that doesn't even talk about the 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 vote the miscounts in the voting machines in Detroit. That doesn't even talk about the uh, the, the number of of no, it wasn't four million people in Chicago, but the number of people that we know that have been proven to have been dead prior to the election that voted. They know, they can go down the they've gone down the voter rolls, and they know. Oh wait wait, this person's been dead for six months. How did they die or how did they vote? So there there wasn't even like you know did uh, 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 pre voting, you know extended voting, and we need to get rid of this extended vote unless you're uh, foreign service or military service. Uh, you know there's one day for you to go and vote. That's it. We don't need to in this day and age in this country we don't need to have the polls open. For early voting a month before the election takes place. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's easy to commit voter fraud then when you have a month to do it versus when you only got one day. Now, now you you can't, you you really, you know, federal-wise, you can't determine how each state does its election process because that's outside the purview of of the Constitution. Each state has has a way of doing it. But each state needs to just get rid of her early. If they have early voting, they need to get rid of it. They need to get rid of it now before the next election cycle of, you know, 2018 or 2020. Um, next presidential election. They need to get rid of early voting. It's insidious. It's dangerous. It's fraught with fraud. The ability to commit fraud and people do commit fraud. And we've got lots of evidence for it. So, the whole notion that this the press is saying, well, there's no evidence of it. That is not only that, that's just not fake news. That's just blatant fraud upon the American people. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand, and most wouldn't believe. 5 Plus 2 Equals Perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must-read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past, and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis' book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. 
And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays. You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. That the that the alt you know we always start calling them the alt left because you know they're they're calling us the alt right as all of a sudden you know and and of course we're we're, we're kind of falling into that trap you know, when Kellyanne Conway said alt facts uh, we're it's this new this new narrative everything is everything that they that if you don't believe in everything that they say then you have then you're the alt right and you have alt facts alternate facts there's no such thing. There is no alternate right. I, th- this is just something that the wonderful left has, has mastered uh, over the past few decades as far as trying to divide us into even smaller and smaller groups. Oh, well, you got, you've got the extreme right and you've got the alt-right now. So now, now we've got a, a, another group of people. That, now they're the alt-right. And that, they're not the extreme right. They're the alter, alternative right. I guess that would be the, the the libertarians, and because now now they're trying to lump these the libertarians into the Nazi class. Well, Nazism is fascism, uh, fascism, and fascism is not on the right side of the political aisle. It's on the left, but they're trying to change the narrative and make it sound like oh now 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 that Donald Trump and and all these alt right people they're fascists they're rightist they're not righties if they're fascists they're not on the right they're on the left. And even some of these lefties, leftist group were anti-fascist. Well, uh, hello, here's a little history lesson. Socialism and communism did not like fascism. Fascism did not like socialism or communism. Why do you think they went to war in Europe for World War II? You would think that they, since they were both on the left that Hitler would have embraced communism. no. Fascism and communism cannot exist side by side. They hate each other because they're, they're, they really don't agree. But they're still on the political left. They both believe in big government. It just depends on the kind of big government that they, that they want. Communist big government says that nobody should own anything, should have private property at all. Fascism says, well, sure, you can have private property. We're just going to control it, though. I guess we kind of do have fascism in this country because people have private property and you got the big left coming in that tells them that the, you, know, you can't build a garage, you can't build this, you can't build that because of this flower, this butterfly, the, you know, this little snail. It's, this snail is an endangered species and it's on your property, so you got to protect your property. You can't build on your property because you got this endangered snail. Well, that's fascism because it's privately owned, but the government gets to dictate Anything and everything that you do on your privately owned property. You know, basically what they do in most states, what they do for for drivers in their automobiles is fascism because they tell you what you can do, how you can do it, when you can do it and where you can do with your automobile. And if you don't go along, either you get fined or you don't, you get your license revoked or you get your registration revoked or they take your car. So you own it, but you don't control it. So this this whole notion that, that that fascism all of a sudden is part of the alt right is a lie. It's not. It's a part of the left. Always has been. Always will be. And I don't know how you can think Trump is a fascist when he wants to shrink government by at least twenty percent and get rid of seventy five percent of the regulation. How is that fascist? These people forget the, the, what the definitions of words. Are. No, I, I they, they haven't forgotten. I, 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 I digress. I have forgotten that the whole point of, of the left is, is you know, ever, especially ever since Bill Clinton, is to change the definition of words and the meanings of words and, and phrases in order to fit their narrative. 
<laughs> I started it, and then they're, they're taking off on it. I can't believe I got all these people to re, to like to 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 uh, rethink what stuff means. And now fascism, <laughs> you can't beat that man to to rename fascism as a right thing instead of a left thing. Oh, that's classic. I love it. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. 
We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. Bring the rain. Well, the left is supposed to be all full of love, peace, and understanding, and and um, and freedom, and people being able to live the way they want to live, unless the way you want to live has nothing to do with the way they want you to live. Then, of course, they're going to try to force you to live the way they want you to live, so they can feel better about the way they live. You know, it, 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 if. If you have this notion that it's quite all right to have an, a quote-unquote alternative lifestyle, well, then they're going to force you to understand that, it, that, that your lifestyle is an alternative lifestyle. There is no mainstream lifestyle. Any way you want to live, as long as, you, as, long as they agree with it, then it should be forcing everybody else. But if they stand in the way of something, you know, well, for, an exa- for example, um, you know, you got the left to talk about you know, you, you, gay rights, gay marriage. Uh, and uh, hey, you know, it's none of your business and uh, who somebody else loves. You can't help who you fall in love with and who you want to be with. You can't help that. Oh, but... But the left doesn't, or, or, or the LGBT community doesn't want to have anything to do with pedophilia, though. So when, when you have people like Nambla that say, well, I, you know, men, old men who want to have sex and marry boys, uh, you know, as, as young as 13, the left, who's, that's not gay. No, we're not going to deal with that until, but don't think that, that, that they're not making inroads with that. Nambla is back, by the way. Remember, remember when there was the issue of, of it was back in the early 2000s, uh, when it was brought to light that Nambla had a website, and it was f- helping to facilitate, you know, pedophilia, basically. Uh, you know, man-on-boy love type of thing. I mean, uh, yeah, most, to most of us, that's utterly disgusting. It really is. There's no excuse for it. There's no defending it. And even to a certain degree, the left pressured all the internet service providers to shut that website down. And Nambla tried going, you know, tried going offshore, you know, to European services, but nobody would host their site and nobody would agree to let the site be, be streamed across their network. So we thought, I didn't think, I knew better. But many thought, especially on the left, thought that Nambla was destroyed and went away. Well, when the Supreme Court issued their ruling that gay marriage was constitutional, it was anti-constitutional to prevent gays from getting married all across the land, Nambla came back. Now, I don't think that they have a website back yet, but they're back in the in they they came back into the limelight. So, well, see. It's just an alternative lifestyle. We also have an alternative lifestyle, much like the polygamist. Because, you know, we had, is there, there's a case out West, I think, right? Um, is it in Oregon? Um, Colorado, someplace out West, I think there's a, a legal case going on about suing for the right to legally marry more than one spouse. And you have this rise in the gay community. I saw this this past weekend, a number of different articles uh, that that touted uh, these triumvirate relationships. 
No, it doesn't seem to be happening in the lesbian community, but in the in the male gay community, there seems to be this rise in 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 guys getting into a three way relationship. And not not just you know not just having, but actually all three of them living together, and in many cases, you know, getting a king size bed, and all three sleep together. This stuff is happening, and they're they're starting to say, "Well, I can only marry one of my partners. Why can't I marry both?" So the Pandora's box was open, and even though the LGBT first said, "Well, all that's not going to happen," we knew it was, and they're saying, "Well, we're not behind most of this stuff," and evidently, it's starting to come out that they are. Because their own community is starting to is starting to reflect this change, you know, and they're using those same terms that 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 the gay community is using. They're trying to get gay marriage passed. You can't help who you love. So you got some fifty year old dirty bastard out there who's who says he's in love with a fourteen year old boy. I can't help who I'm in love with. Did we not say that this was the, it was going to be a slippery slope? And it's already happening. And at a lot faster pace than even some on the right thought it would happen. That's scary. And yet we still have people out there who are trying to foist this notion of alternative lifestyles on us. Here's an example. The city of brotherly love. Philadelphia. Philly mayor mandates bias training for businesses in the neighborhood. Who are the people in your neighborhood? Your neighborhood. Your neighborhood. I am your neighbor in the neighborhood. Now, here's a story. This came comes from the from Hot Air. Here's a story that that you probably didn't see coming. Oh, I saw it coming. I've even mentioned it a few times that something like like this was going to happen. Ever since, you know, we uh, th- those wonderful biz- small business owners, the pizza parlor and the baker, and uh, were being attacked and hammered and, and sued o- over their beliefs that they shouldn't have to service a gay wedding. Oh, yeah, I said it was, co- you know, it was going to be it was going to be coming. This kind of thing was going to come going to be coming. And it's here. And within the city of brotherly love, the city of brotherly love has a problem. Evidently with bias in certain businesses and organizations, and the mayor has decided to do something about it. The troubles are centered in one particular district locally referred to as the Gaberhood because of the large number of LGBT orientated bars and services in the area. Now, I don't want to know what some of those services are. It sounds good so far, you might think. You know, we, we don't, you know, obviously, you know, we, we don't, we don't want people discriminating against gays and lesbians anymore, right? You know, we, we, we've, we've moved past that kind of thing, right? Where our society is more enlightened, right? Uh, but, but discriminating against gays and lesbians is not the problem. Oh, no, 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 it's not, that's not the problem. That's not the problem in the neighborhood. It's not straight people trying to discriminate against gay people in the neighborhood. It's not necessarily gay people discriminating against straight people in the neighborhood. No, 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 no. That's not the problem. Now, understand and keep and keep in mind that the LGBT community community is, you know, vast, maybe not overwhelmingly, but vastly liberal. They're vastly liberal. Now, they're supposed to be open-minded, loving, caring. All inclusive, you know, that's why they have all these different letters for all their stuff. You know, LGBT has gone to LGBTQQPDQXYZ tranny, um, you know, and, and, and the more politically correct, it's not, you know, now you're not a tranny, you're not a transvestite, you're a transgender. And you don't, if you don't want to be labeled a bisexual, you're polyamorous. I, 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 I mean, so so they're they, they, they're broad, right? They're all inclusive. They're loving. The rainbow of colors and everything, right? Oh, hold the phone. Time out. The problem is not being inclusive of straights or straights being inclusive of gays. No, 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 no. The problem is within the LGBT community, community itself. That wonderful community that is so liberal, so much for Hillary Clinton. Can't stand Donald Trump because Donald Trump's a 
He's a fag hater. He's a, he's a, you know, he's an anti-Semite and everything else that goes along with being a racist, right? No, not outside the community, but within the LGBT PDQ community, there's a problem. It's racial bias. Racial bias. Now, how do these two things intersect? Well, as it turns out, the LGBT community in Philadelphia is primarily white. And they're kind of racist. At least according, uh, according to the Philadelphia mayor. Bar owners and nonprofits in the neighborhood must attend training sessions on fair business practice, practices and implicit bias. The city announced earlier this week. The mandate comes as part of a report released Monday by the Commission on Human Relations that found widespread widespread reports of racial tensions and bias and discrimination in the neighborhood, which often touts its inclusivity. So, you got a bunch of uppity gay people who are who are racist, and they're leftists. But I thought it was just I thought it was just straight white uh straight white Republican men that were racist. Isn't that what we've been told? Isn't that what's always being reported? Racism in the LGBT community is a real issue. It's a real issue in our entire society society, not only just in the LGBT well, yeah, they gotta bring in everybody else when the LGBT community is the one that has a problem. Uh, It's not just a problem in the LGBTQ area or in the neighborhood area, said Mayor Kenny. We need to to do more to address it here in Philadelphia. We will do whatever else we need to do to see that the recommendations are adopted and that possibly could include eliminating organizations who won't change their ways by limiting our participation in their work financially. So this is basically, how do you mandate a business? Are, are there business licenses and liquor licenses being held hostage that if they don't go to this, these training sessions, they could lose their business? Well, that's basically what the mayor is saying. In other words, if you don't come around to think the way we or I want you to think, you're going to lose your business. Now, frankly, I am not for racism of any kind in any neighborhood. But now you're going to start having government entities start to dictate what racism really is and that if you don't change your ways and adopt the policies that they want you to have, you're going to lose your business? Well, I think that's a little bit fascist, don't you? And and if you think all this kind kind of... All this kind of liberal nut jobbery doesn't ever really start on a state level. It already always starts on a city level someplace, a municipal level, usually out in California. I'm, su- I'm surprised they haven't tried to do this in, in San Francisco first. You know, here it is in Philadelphia. It starts on a, on a citywide level first, and then it sort of moves into a statewide uh, view and then before you know it, you got marches everywhere saying that this needs to be done na- nationwide from the federal level. So this is not going to be the end of this, folks. This is just the beginning. So now we're going to have we're going to have people starting to dictate who are in political office are going to start dictating what policies that businesses have. And if you don't have the same kind of policy that they want you to have, that they dictate that you should have, then they're going to see that you go out of business some, one way or another. But wait, we're missing the greater point here, which is the LG, within the LGBT community, there's a huge racial problem. Now, if you're in the neighborhood and they're talking about gays, well, doesn't that mean white men? Liberal white men are racist? No, wait, no, I just, I'm, I gotta wrap my mind, this, hey, this is something new to me, 
I thought it was only us white Republican men that were racist. That's what they always told me. Because I was white and I was Republican. I was automatically a KKK man. And, and it, comes down, it comes down to history that it's always been on the left. And now you're telling me in Philadelphia that they've got gay white men who are racist? I thought they were all inclusive and loving. <laughs> Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 it started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. Something else out of the silliness of the left. Everybody remember Eric Garner? Uh, you, you know, you know the guy that was uh, uh, evidently choked to death uh, by the NYPD. Well, his widow got a got a settlement, two point four million dollar settlement uh, in a wrong wrongful death uh, suit. Uh, the settlement for her husband's death. Uh, because the uh, the cash is not being counted as disqualifying income to his widow, which means a $2.4 million settlement uh, means that she will not have to leave her government housing project apartment. Esau Snipes, uh, evidently is, is, is her name, E-S-A-W, Snipes. Got a five got five hundred thousand dollars up uh, upfront payment following a judge's order in November, and we'll see the rest once a dispute among the lawyers involved the case is fully resolved. So lawyers are fighting over this woman's two point four million dollar settlement. The federal federal rules say she can keep her apartment in the Fulton Houses in Chelsea and won't even have to pay increased rent 
a rep for the New York City Housing Authority said. So this woman is going to be sitting on, by the time the lawyers and everything get paid, over a million dollars. And yeah, the lawyers are going to eat up about a million of it. So she's going to be sitting on over a million dollars. And she's going to keep her rent-controlled housing project apartment. Now, I don't know why she'd want to stay there, to tell you the truth. I mean, she's going to be a marked woman. Uh, you, give me some money, bitch. You got it. We know you got it. She, she, you know it's going to happen. So she's, But she's not going to be forced to move. She's not going to be forced to pay higher rent because it's not qualifying income. So here it is. You can evidently somehow sit on more than a million dollars and if that million dollars is not qualifying income, I don't know what the frick qualifying income is. Um, it, well, I guess it's not income. It's just, well, what is she going to do with it? If she, even if she just sticks it in the bank, isn't, isn't that interest that's going to be earned on that? Even if it's at the, the pul- a paltry 2 or 3%, isn't that going to be qualifying income? Evidently not. I mean, so... So the, even if it's just 3% of a million dollars is what, another thirty thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year on top of whatever she's already making that's not going to be considered qualifying income? All right, really? So she's going to get to stay in the... This is why we need to get rid of this welfare system, folks. Because you can get... You can have income like this. And uh, uh, money, well, not income, but money like this. And it's not going to be construed as qualifying income. So you won't have to leave your government-sponsored housing project apartment or even be forced to pay more in rent to come more. Yeah, she's getting an extra 30 grand a year at minimum. I think she can afford to pay market rates in, in, uh, in New York City, in Chelsea. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure, Mar- what is market rate? This is, Chelsea is one of the cheaper communities, right? So it's probably around, for for apartment her size, it's probably going to be about 1500 bucks a month. You want to tell me somebody who's getting $30,000 a year free and clear is not going to be able to afford 1500 bucks a month? Uh, I mean, it's free housing anyway then, isn't it? Uh, but she won't be able to use that money, Rod. Mexico says that it's ready to walk out on NAFTA if talks with U.S. fail, and they're going to try to put into place in, in with NAFTA this thing about the wall because they don't want to have to pay for the wall. And I think they're starting to realize, oh, hell, man, that Trump guy, that Trump dude now the president of the United States, he, he's going to make us pay. We're going to end up paying for that wall after all, aren't we? Yeah, well, we tried telling you that before. Um, so they say, but if the, if the NAFTA talks don't go again, it's going to hurt them more than it's going to hurt us. And yeah, everybody's, uh, uh, and Hillary is, is now at a 50, 50, whether or not she's going to run for New York city mayor. That's, that's part of her comeback, I guess, as far as running for mayor. I, I you just can't get rid of these people. I mean, we dispatch them in an election after election after election, and they still keep coming back. They find a way to weasel their way back. So get ready, folks, for, um, oh, by the way, look out for on Twitter. Massive network of fake accounts on Twitter has been discovered. Massive numbers. Maybe you're being fake Twittered out there, so be careful. And also be on the lookout for more Trump executive orders for uh, being signed today. Until then, we're out of time right now. We'll be back here in 21 hours. I'm Rod Eccles. This has been the Rod Eccles Show. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful hump day afternoon. I'm out. to know what they do.
What, what difference does it make? For Clinton, what's loaded in some fat apple file? A Clinton plays the victim for promotion. A Clinton kills it off with a smile. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. A server full of secrets ain't no thing. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. Nothing ever hits with a sting. 